Hey everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I have some project shares for the KS Craft Store. I am on their design team and this is going to be part two of my project share videos for the June 2022 release. I will have part one linked down below. Um, these are a bunch more dies, still not all of them, but a lot of them and the different stamp sets that came in my package this month. I'll have links to the um, products on AliExpress in the description box. If you have any questions, please let me know. So I'm gonna start off like I usually do with showing you um, a die that I used and then the project that I used. And um, I'll try to include measurements as well, just to give you an idea of how big the dies are. Okay, so the first one is called the Castle Shaker. And it's a Disney-inspired castle, as you can see. Uh, it looks like the one at Magic Kingdom. It comes with the, the base piece and then the layering piece. So this is the part that you use to make the shaker with. So it's very simple, comes with those two, and then it comes with the sentiment that says, my happy place, which I thought was a really nice addition to this set. So I did make a shaker. And this is an embellishment that I plan to add to an album or to a card or something like that. Maybe even just a tag. I like to add shakers to tags as well. So I use the Frank Garcia uh, Disney inspired paper collection for this project as well, which I did for uh, a lot of my projects in my last video. But if you could see the print in the background, it's very subtle, but it is of Magic Kingdom with fireworks going off. So I thought that was perfect for the background for this shaker embellishment. And I used some pink shimmer paper for the layering piece, and I used some Dollar Tree foam board for the shaker part. Okay, sorry, I just got a phone call, so I had to interrupt myself, but um, we were talking about this shaker embellishment. And so, yeah, I used the Dollar Tree foam board, but I did flatten it out quite a bit, as you could see. I kept running it through my die cutting machine multiple times because there are all of these uh, small cuts. So that's the only downfall with um, making this into a shaker, I think, is just, you know, having to line up all of those little tiny skinny parts and things. You really have to, you know, um, cut everything out precisely on your die cutting machine. So, I mean, once I went, you know, once it went through my die cutting machine a few times, it was fine, but it did make it very thin. So just wanted to put that out there. And I used a really pretty uh, mix called the princess mix. So I thought that was perfect for this. And for my happy place, I used some white glitter cardstock and then some plain blue cardstock and just kind of offset them a little bit just to give it a little bit of dimension. So came out super cute, I thought. The castle itself is about three and a half inches wide by a little over three and a half inches tall. My happy place is uh, also, well, not quite, about almost three and a half inches, three and three eighths, and um, one and a half inches from top to bottom. And this is all connected. You don't have to like, you know, piece the my, the happy, and the place are all connected, which makes it very easy. So there's that. And then I also made something with the negative space for the castle that was cut out of the layering part. Um, it cut out a perfect castle, so I don't want to waste it. So I made a tag. And this is the tag I made. That's the piece that I was telling you about. And I used some more of that Frank Garcia paper, which I love that print. It's just so pretty. It's got like all the different Disney theme um, like uh, sayings and, and attractions at the park, I should say. And then there are a couple of um, tickets from that same paper collection as well. And I used a flower. This is also from KS Craft, this die set. This is from that A5 uh, planner slip pocket that I showed in my last video. And I used Nouveau Drops all around it just to give it a little bit of sparkle. The tag die is also from KS Craft. I'll link that down below, even though it's not part of this release, but that's a really nice tag set. It comes with the inner and the outer parts. So I like that a lot. I punched a hole with the crocodile and used some pretty seam binding from Etsy for the tie. And uh, yeah, I think that came out really nice, especially for something unintentional, you know, just not to waste the, the pink castle. So that's the tag that I made. So I hope you like that. We'll move on to the next project. 
Okay, this one, this one is really fun. This one's called the men's t-shirt. And it's not really a t-shirt. A t-shirt I think of uh, as not having a collar. Um, it's more of, you know, like an Oxford shirt, like a short sleeve Oxford shirt. But anyway, it comes with the outline piece, the base piece. It comes with the layering piece that has some stitching details at the shoulders and at the hem. And then it comes with this piece, which has a collar and the uh, placket. And then it comes with the layering collar, uh, layering parts for the sleeves, like cups, and then pockets. You could use the pockets if you want. You can use one, two, whatever. So that's a, that's a really fun project. And I used... Um, one of Anna, or not Anna, Hannah's suggestions for one of them. Um, this is a card that I made. She suggested making it into an easel card, which I totally did here. And the way I did that was I took the base piece and um, I folded a piece of blue paper, that blue right there, and um, I put the paper under the die before it went into my die cutting machine. And I put the fold, I had it end like right before the cut line there. So uh, that way it still has a neck part, not quite as big as this one, but it doesn't cut that neck. So it flips up. So that's a fun thing to do. So that's what I did with this one. I used this nice gingham paper for the layering piece. And I actually cut down the button placket just, I don't know, just to make it like, you know, as some shirts look like that. Some have buttons that go all the way down. So this one I just had go there. And I, I didn't use a layering piece for the collar. I just kept it on this poke, in this polka dot fabric. And I did the, uh, the cups and one pocket with that same fabric. So like I said, I made it so you can open it. And that is the inside. And this is actually a stamp set that is from the release as well. And let me show you that. This is called the Large Crafting Quotes. And Nicole designed these. I was just watching her video today, so I know that uh, she designed them. And it comes with this die as well that fits perfectly over all six sentiments, which is nice. And for some of them, you can cut off part of the, um, well, not cut the stamp, but after you stamp it, you know, uh, you don't have to use all the words is what I'm saying. You could cut off, you know, part of the sentiment. So, um, yeah, I use this one. Uh, you are perfect, amazing, special, unique, and truly loved. And it's stamped out really well, I must say. Um, and it fits perfectly on this shirt. So that's what I thought I would do for this. Just something a little bit different. And yeah, that's the back. So very easy card to make. I thought this would be nice for a dad. My dad's birthday's in the summer, so this might be perfect for him. Maybe I'll put like um, his name or, you know, what the kids call him on the front too, just to add a little bit more embellishment. So that's the first one I made. Oh, let me measure it. So this is a decent size too. This is um, about four and a quarter if you didn't cut off that part at the top like I did. So about four and a quarter inches long. And then the widest part is is uh, three and seven eighths inches across. So yeah, a nice size shirt and it's super cute. Love the stitching detail. It's fun to, you know, change this around, make it for any different kind of patterns that you want. I made this one too. This one I just made into the basic shirt itself. So let me, let me actually measure that one. Yeah, that's four and a quarter. So this one I used some polka dot paper for the base, uh, for the layering part of the collar and for the pockets. I used, uh, these are doodle bug papers. I think the green one is too, I'm not quite sure, but the plaid and the, the floral like reddish paper are doodle bug. And then I used Nouveau drops going down the placket to kind of look like buttons. And I thought this would be a great gift tag, you know, just poke a hole right there at a um, eyelet and you're good to go. Put your information or whatever on the back. And since this was double-sided paper, it's got little coffee cups on the back, which I thought was a nice touch anyway. So really, really cute, right? Oh, I love these. And I have so many like cute plaids and, you know, uh, any kind of occasion this would be fun for. So for a man, for a boy, whatever. So that's my next project. Hope you like that one as well. Um, let me move this over and then we'll move the die set over as well and go on to the next projects. Okay, this one is called the Mermaid Seashell Shaker. Uh, it comes in two sizes, the big or the small, and I made them in both, so I'll be able to measure them for you. And it, each one comes with three different pieces. It comes with the, the base piece, 
It comes with the layering piece to make it into a shaker if you want or not, just adds another layer. And then it comes, the uh, inside part of the base piece pops out and this one has little mermaid tails and you can make shaker bits with these, which is really nice. Nicole designed this as well and she always thinks of something fun to add on the you know parts that would just be blank otherwise. So it's a, it's a nice touch and um, you know very thoughtful addition to the die set. So there's the big one and there's a the small one. So let me show you what I made. I made two matching cards, one with the big one, one with the small. So here they are and yeah aren't they sweet? I really like those. So let's start with this one. This is the big one as you could see and this one is about two and a half inches tall by three inches wide. And I did use some of those uh, shaker bits that popped that you can punch out with the die for the inside of the shakers. And it's good if you use double-sided paper just because it just in case they flip over, uh, you know, it won't look like just a plain piece of white paper on the inside. And if you use shimmer paper, that's usually double-sided. So that's what I did. Um, I added some shaker bits and coordinating colors. And this mermaid is a sticker that I had gotten in a pack from Target uh, a while ago. And I just love these mermaids. I did add some stickles to give her some glitter. And then this is some ephemera from uh, Joann's. I had a mermaid pack and I added some Nouveau drops here to give it a little bit of texture as well. And the Mermazing, that is from a KS Craft stamp set as well. So that one is called the Mermaid Talk Silicone Stamps. And these have really fun sayings. These, I showed these in my um, design team haul, but let me just show you what they look like here too. So really fun mermaidy beach summer boat kind of uh, sayings. So I used a bunch of these in my projects today. So for this one, like I said, I used Mermazing and I stamped it with uh, Versafine, I think, water, watermark ink and then put on some silver embossing powder and heat embossed it. And as you can see, it worked beautifully. Uh, that sticker goes with her. And uh, yeah, I just used a die that I have and some, this is actually some KS Craft polka dot paper that I got recently, not in a design team haul, but I did buy it from their Alley store. So I thought that would be nice to use on this. And I like the pastel colors and I just thought it was a pretty summery card. The inside I used, oh, did I show you? Oh, this was from, um, the next set that I'm going to show you, but uh, these are bubble, like the negative part of a bubble die. So that's not from this stamp set or die set, but um, anyway, this one is just the shell and the uh, shaker bits. So the next one looks very similar, but it's the smaller shell. And this one is about two inches tall, more or less, and about two, well, two and three eighths inches across. And this one, again, I use some of the shaker bits and these are smaller mermaid tails. You can mix and match them. The big ones, you know, probably wouldn't fit as well into the small ones, but you could definitely use the small ones in the big seashell. So I used the mermaid kisses again from that KS Craft stamp set and I heat embossed it. Uh, more Joann's ephemera, Target stickers, and pretty papers. The purple polka dot is also from KS Craft. I'll link that pad down below as well, even though it's not part of this release, but you might uh, be interested in those two. They're really nice papers. So this one on the inside looks like this and I just added some more bubbles again from the next stand or die set that I'm going to show you and a couple of sequins to look like bubbles. So those are the two cards that I made. I made them at the same time and I think they came out really really cute. They'd be perfect for a little girl for any occasion or even a grown-up girl. We like mermaids too. So that was that project and yeah we'll move on to the next one that I was just talk talking to you about and this one is called the large seashell. So yes this one is large and it's designed to be uh, a shaker and it's also perfect for a mini album. And I did make a mini album. I'll show you that in a second. So it comes with the base piece. It comes with the layering stitched piece. It comes with this layering piece that you can make it into a shaker. This is These are the bubble pieces that I was just showing you. So it cuts out the frame of the bubbles and then like individual circles. So even if you just need some circles of uh, small 
to medium shape or size, you can use that die for that. It also comes with the word mermazing with the dash in between the mer and the mazing and a shadow piece, which is really nice. So a lot going on in this die set. And yeah, um, Hannah has a tutorial on how to make a spine for the, if you want to make this into a mini album. And usually when I make mini albums, I just use like binder rings to hold it together. But I wanted to, you know, expand my mini album repertoire. So I did, oops, sorry, I did follow Hannah's tutorial to make a spine and I'm happy with how it came out. So let me show you my little mini album. Isn't that so cute? I used for most of the papers uh, a paper pad or a paper collection from Damask Love called Sunshine Boulevard. And I had gotten papers and a project pad from Joanne's um, at least last year, maybe earlier than that. So I used papers from there and other like bright sunshiny papers I had in my stash. I don't have a lot of summer papers. So I was glad to have that so I could um, include that in this uh, project. So anyway, getting on to the album itself, the front cover I made into a shaker and I used all the pieces from the die set. And uh, I think it's adorable. I used the mermazing also from the die set and I popped that up on some Dollar Tree foam board just to give it some dimension. This tail, oh, I forgot to mention that. The tail die comes with the set as well. And you can see it embosses and actually even like cuts out some of the scales and it embosses the like fin part of the tail too. So it adds a lot of nice dimension and texture to this. And I use some holographic glitter paper from Sizzix for it. And you can really see the details there. Some of the scales are embossed, some are cut out a little bit too, which is really nice. And I cut this out of Dollar Tree foam board as well to layer it up. Um, this is a piece of uh, like a punch out ephemera from that Damask Love collection. I glued on a bunch of the little bubbles I cut out of that same glitter paper. And then I added some, um, not um, glossy accents, but the Lawn Fawn version of that. It's called Lawn Fawn Clear Glaze. And it comes in a little tube. Let me show you that. Okay, it comes in a tube like this. It's called Lawn Fundamentals Clear Glaze. And I like this because it has a small tip so you can add just like little bubbles like this that really look like water droplets when it dries. And you know, big globs. You know, sometimes glossy accents leaves a big blob. So uh, let me measure this before we get into it. Okay, so from top to bottom, the, whoops, keep sliding. The mini album is about four and a half inches. And from side to side, the biggest part is four and three quarter inches. So a really nice size, it, um, you know, you don't have to make it into a shaker, of course. I feel like I always say that, and you probably know that, but you don't have to. You could just layer the, um, the edge pieces right on top of a uh, background piece and it would look really, really cute. So then I added some seashell sequins on the inside and other bright, fun colored sequins and different shaker bits. So that's the cover and the spine is what I followed Hannah's tutorial for how to make. Um, I gotta do something to finish this off because I had a little gluing issue here. So, uh, but I'll, I'll figure that out. But anyway, that's the spine that I made and I made five pages, including the back cover. So it was fun to make. Thank you for your tutorial, Hannah. It was really easy. So this is the inside and I haven't put anything on the, the uh, like the back part of the pages yet, but I probably will. But I did just put some pattern paper there for now. But for the main pages, um, I cut out of the base piece and the layering piece. And I cut them out a few times so they're really nice and sturdy. I use a damask glove paper and then I used the KS Craft stamp set again and made these banners. The, the stitched banner itself is from um, Erica who is Scrap Diva Designs and this was part of my design team package from her. But um, I decided to just put some uh, double-sided tape on the bottom of the banner and use them as little pockets. So all of these little ephemera pieces that I put in here can pop out. So 
I thought it'd be good to use as just to, you know, just to store ephemera like there, or you could pop a picture in there. Um, this would be a good gift for somebody, like a crafty friend, because they could use the ephemera pieces and then they can reuse the album, um, you know, as a scrapbook and put their own photos in there. So that's what I was thinking when I made this album. So there's the first page. All the pages are very similar. They all have some ephemera. This is also from um, KS Crafts, um, new stamp release and this one I used some pink uh, ink and then I put some holographic embossing powder on the top and heat embossed it so there's that one life's a beach and I love that print with the sunbathers and the tops of the umbrellas and for the pages oh I wanted to tell you I used the Cricut craft board uh, which I've mentioned many times I've gotten from Amazon and it's really nice sturdy um, cardstock that's perfect for mini albums. So there's that one and as you can see like I mentioned all the other sides of the pages are just blank at the moment. Um, here's another one that says fantastic on the banner which oh, I just love that and that has gold embossing and more pieces of ephemera with the fun summery backgrounds. This one says mermaid kisses, another bathing beauty, sunglasses, and a floaty. So yeah, just such a fun way to send something to a crafty friend. Some more on the last page, best fishes. I thought that was really cute. And this reminds me of the KS Craft uh, Flamingo Floaty Die that I showed last week. And it says, you're one pool kid. And then on the back, uh, I did use the same dies as I did on the front, but I did not make it into a shaker. This was what I was trying to describe before. You know, just put the layering piece on top of the base piece. Doesn't have to be a shaker and it's still really cute. So, and then I put beach please. I just, I think that saying is so cute and cheeky. So that's my little mini album, the first one I ever made with the spine like that. So it was really fun to make and I like having a different option for making closures. This is also less clunky to use than the, uh, the binder ring one, so that was fun. So I'll link uh, Hannah's video to show you how to make the spine in case you are interested. She does a great job explaining how to create something like that. So yeah, just make it all from scratch. It's always fun to do, right? Okay, so the next one we have is called the Cute Interactive Camera. Oh, I love this. This is like the Instamax camera. It comes with the base piece, it comes with the layering piece, and then actually another layering piece here that goes on here to give it some dimension. It comes with the different lenses and uh, tabs and lights and stuff that go on the front of the camera. And then it comes with this little picture die set that can pop out the top of your camera and what's great about it is it has these like little stops on the bottom so it doesn't pull it doesn't pull all the way out you know it stops like at the top of your camera so that was a really nice touch that Hannah added um, sorry not Hannah Nicole Nicole designed this so let me show you that I thought it, mine came out really really cute I used a, a new paper pad that I got from Joann's actually it's not new but it's new to me I'll show it in my haul on in this week's haul video but um, this one has some strawberries on it and leaves and things like that so I decided to go with that for the color scheme just red and green and white and I made the lens into a shaker which is easy to do with these pieces. Um, it does not come with a plain um, circle background piece, but most of us have a die that will punch out a piece that will fit the back of your circle, or you could just trace it and then freehand cut it. It's just the back, so it doesn't have to be perfect, you know? So I just used a circle die that I had in my stash and made it into a shaker. Um, again, I used some flowers from that from that planner page die that I showed last week. And I love the size of these flowers. They're just perfect for decorations. I used some glossy black paper from Tonic for the different buttons and things. And here is my little picture. And it comes with the little arrow piece that you can add to, you know, tell somebody that they need to pull it up, which comes with layering pieces too. So this is the little picture that pops up. Isn't that so cute? And the little mouse comes with this uh, paper pad. So again, I'll show that in my Friday haul. And then I stamped on Smile from a different die set. And I didn't stamp it perfectly, but eh, that's okay. This is homemade. I am perfectly fine with that. So isn't that adorable? Smile for a uh, 
uh, camera card. I thought that was fun. And then what I did for the back is I cut this the base piece out twice, and then I kind of just uh, sandwiched the the um, the picture in between them, so it wasn't like hanging out the back. So. I just wanted to finish it off a little bit. So I think this is so cute and yeah, I think I say that for everything, but this really is. All right, so this one measures, um, let's see, about three and three eighths inches long by uh, two and three quarter inches wide. So that's what that looks like. And perfect for embellishments, scrapbooks, a camera is perfect for scrapbooks, right? Mini albums, all that kind of stuff. So there's that. And I just have one more thing I wanted to share with you. I, I did not make too much with this quite yet, but I will get to it. These are the KS Craft Happy Mail tags and they are stamps. Uh, very, very cute, nine of them. And they do come with two circle dies. Uh, mine didn't come with it, but the ones that you order will come with the, with the dies. And these are designed by Nicole, and they're nice stamps for back of your envelopes, for tags, for cards. Um, they say, happy mail just for you, happy birthday, my friends, limited edition, get well soon, happy anniversary, handmade for you, you're my cup of tea, but first coffee, coffee and chat with the question mark. And these are, well, I did make a few, but I'll measure these. These are about, from edge to edge of the stamp is about one and seven sixteenths, if you wanna be exact. <laughs> All right, so, and I'll just show you a couple that I made. I haven't added them to anything yet, but this one is the Happy Mail just for you and limited edition. And I used, I think I used Memento Tuxedo Black ink for these. But uh, I'm looking forward to adding these to, to um, backs of envelopes or um, happy mail. And um, I did use a circle die, like I mentioned, that I had in my stash, but these do come with dies that uh, I just didn't get in my design team package. So those are all my projects for uh, the second part of June 2022. KS craft dies. I hope you like them. I still have more to get to, so I will get to those, but I uh, just wanted to come on and show you what I've been doing so far. Uh, very fun projects, perfect for summer. Lots of them are perfect for any time of year. And yeah, I hope you have fun with them. So again, links will be down below in the description box. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I'll be back soon with more crafty videos. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Take care, bye.